actually feels like fall outside, so like perfect timing for this. Everybody, welcome back to a well-read nerd and as you can tell from the title I'm going to be doing an unboxing today for Unplug Box's limited edition cozy autumn box. Now I know I said I wasn't going to be doing any more monthly unboxings for them. I'm not. This is a special limited edition box that I purchased and you guys know how much I love fall so of course I was going to show it off with you guys. Now this cost me I think I think it was $69.99. I'll put it in here uh, in post if I'm wrong, but I think it was $69.99 with shipping and handling. Now with that are supposed to be several feel good, cozy autumn items, plus a book to get you into that cozy autumn feeling. I don't remember anything about the book, so that'll be a surprise. Hopefully it's good. Uh, tried that one back there from that month's. The first person is getting me but other than that like if you're okay with first person narratives that one's actually really good so in any case i am going to open up the plain nondescript box in front of me that has my address on it so i'm not going to show you and we're going to take a look at the items and see what we have really quickly before i get started i did look in this box i am glad i looked in this box because there was a missing item now i have the item because their customer service is actually really good I emailed them the night I came home, basically counted how many items were on the card, counted how many items were in the box without really looking at anything, and went, hey, I'm missing one. So I had to look at the spoiler card, not that I remember what it said now, but I was missing an item. Now I reached out to their customer care on their website and was just basically like, hey, uh, did I miss an email? Were you out of this item? Was it supplemented for something else? Like the numbers aren't matching up. And they were like, sorry, we'll send you it. And I was like, okay, cool. Uh, literally like three days later, it was in my mail, which was awesome. So that is one good thing about this company. When they goof up like that, they will replace the item. So now I have all of the items in here and we're gonna take a look at them. First thing we have is our spoiler card, but it also has just this amazing little fall tableau on there with the pumpkins and the warm tea. I like this. It's going on the postcard wall. Even though it's a spoiler card, I'm still, I put them on my postcard wall. I'm weird like that. I don't care. Uh, we also have some fun little decorations in there. They included these cute little like uh, fabric leaves in the box to add to it. I like that. I will use these. I actually have several bags of these where I do crafting. Uh, so I got some of these already, but they will be added to my crafting pile because I do make garlands and things out of these. All right, our first item is wrapped up, so I'm gonna open it. All right, and we have what I think is a blanket. I'm gonna open it up and see. It is a blanket. It's not the thickest blanket I've ever had, but it's, it's like all of their other ones. It's a cute like lap blanket. It's very, it's warm for the, enough for that. It's got like the little felt back to it, not felt, it's not really Sherpa, it's like the fuzzy. I can see it coming off in front of my face while I do that. But it's like the fuzzy blankets. I like those. I'm trying to figure out which way it goes. So I can hopefully show you guys. Oh, but look good, because I can't tell what it is. Let me just suck. It's a library scene that will match the picnic blanket that they I got a few months ago. I forget which box it's in. It actually gets used as a picnic blanket here. Uh, actually, right now, I think it's... Uh, I put it away because it's getting into cooler weather. But yeah, this is very nice. I have it across my lap right now. Um, and as somebody who's always cold, yes, it's a very nice blanket. It will keep you warm. So that's an A plus right there. All right, next we have... Cozy Autumn Afternoon Shower Gel by Nature's Whimsy and it's very sparkly. I'm not sure if that, yeah, that's showing up on there, but it is super adorable and it, he taped it on top so it wouldn't spill in the box, which is always a good thing. Let me get the tape off. Right, I'll just uncap it. Let's see. It smells like fall. It smells like cinnamon and clove and all those nice warm things. 
Uh, Nature's Whimsy is a really good company. I like getting their stuff. I've never had an issue with any of it, so that's always good. All right, and it wouldn't be fall without a new fall candle. This is just called Cozy Season. Let's see if it tells me who's by. Blue Forest Black Moon. It's supposed to be pumpkin, caramel, and spice. And this is specifically a coconut soy. It smells like fall. Uh, it smells amazing. It smells like a caramel pumpkin spice latte. And I love that. Right, now this is the item that was originally missing when I reached out to them. It's a small item, so it's completely understandable. It's not anything large like the book or anything. But we have an Autumn Hike perfume roller. And I don't know if it's gonna, you see, it's got those little crystal gems in there. I don't know, I always like those. They serve no purpose, but I like them. And this is supposed to smell like sage, clove, and crunchy leaves. It does smell like leaves, which I like. I am perfectly all right with smelling like rotting, decaying foliage. Not for everyone, however, I think I just found my signature scent. Now we have a little box, so let's open it up and see what's inside. Right, we have a plate. I'm assuming there's another box in here. I'm assuming it goes with it, but this is very nice. Very fall colored. It's got a little book there in the center and a little book surrounding it. Uh, it's very cute. And if this is a teacup like the other ones, it will go in my teacup collection, which will eventually get moved. Uh, it's eating up a lot of space on there that like, I want for more books. I have more books in my room that I want to like my bedroom that are just like sitting there where I have my makeshift uh, like side table made out of books that I just read through and grab stuff. Um, I did recently to buy outside of a, a subscription box um, Neon Gods, which was really big on like booktube and books bookstagram like last year, I want to say like last summer or something. Anyway, I picked it up uh, and I haven't actually like set in to read it, but I did read the first like chapter of it. I skimmed the first chapter of it. And I can immediately tell you, I am going to like it more than I liked Scarlet St. James's Hades X Persephone series. So I'm not anti Greek God smut. I just prefer it to be a little bit, I don't know, more fleshed out. All right, and here is the cup with it, which has a lovely bookshop tableau on it. Again, it's one of their short little like, I know this isn't an espresso cup because this is way too big to be an espresso cup, uh, but for me, this is an espresso cup. So yeah, it goes like this. It's very cute together. I like to play on color. Uh, so yeah, this is a very cute little teacup and it's going to go over here so that I don't break it or fall leaves. Cute new bookmark or I could put my name up there where it says books of but yeah it's cute relatively well made for a paper bookmark so this will be good to have I'll probably stick it in my new book and we have the book which is hardcover and in this adorable fall like paper I love when they take the theming all the way through their last specialty box I was not in thrilled with because I felt like they it lacked the usual theming and quality of theming that I'd gotten used to with the company they've brought it back a little bit with this one because this is excellent theming for this box so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open this and we're gonna see what's inside all right and here's our book we have the ways we hide a riveting tale of intrigue and illusion of one woman's struggle to escape her past. According to the blurb on it. Uh, let's see. It's by New York Times bestselling author Christina McMorris. Familiar with the name, not familiar with this particular book, but I can't know every single book that comes out in the year. So, all right, so I'm going to take a look at the blurb and I'm going to give you an idea about what it's about. I can kind of already tell from the, like, excerpt or not excerpt like the blurb there and then like the picture but I'll read to see if it's what I think it is all right so it's a World War II book I do like historical fiction this is its 
based off real events, I always take that with a big old hunk of salt because inspired by could mean anything. Technically, Game of Thrones was inspired by the War of the Roses. So, yeah, other than that, it's basically uh, about a girl during World War II who gets swept up into, like, the conflict and things like that. Uh, specifically because she's a, an assistant to an escape artist and, all, like, all of the skills that she learned through that. And then it's a little weird already because it says that she was, uh, like, directly, like... I guess headhunted by MI9, which is a British organization, but it clearly states that she lives in Michigan. So in the little blurb, so like I'm, I don't know if it is the author playing fast and loose with historical events and what would have been going on at the time, or if it's like a, a lack of intricate knowledge of the area of the era. Like I'd have to read it to know for sure. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know like i talk about my background sometimes uh but i was in fact a history minor at my fancy liberal arts college in when i went to university uh so world war ii was a bit of a uh, thing i was into for about a year when i was in college before like i really latched on to uh, pre-roman hellenistic history as like something that i was like full into and then, of course, uh, proto classical Mediterranean cultures. Uh, but so to let you know what kind of nerd I am, there you go. Uh, I'm the kind of person that once spent a summer trying to figure out linear A with some friends just for something to do while we drank. Anyway, uh, no shame against any author who plays fast and loose or might not be as familiar with the source material uh if they're not if they don't have a background in history that's fine uh, i don't take it as seriously as i used to be not everybody like has a brain that works like me where you do deep dive research binges at two o'clock in the morning because you can't sleep so that's cool i just hope it doesn't uh interfere like uh, if there is a lack of Full comprehension it doesn't interfere with their ability to put forth the plot and make the plot believable that's my big critique about books like that now i'm i'm not as like nitpicky about historical accuracies as i used to be however i still have to buy what you're selling and if it comes across as somebody who's trying to piece together like a cobble of like what they think happened as opposed to actually being knowledgeable or at least being able to fake it till you make it it does come across and works and i just I'm, I'm not a fan of that but yeah uh let's do the neurodivergent test first person again okay uh okay uh i don't i can't it's not that i can't read first person i can read first person however um for anybody out there who is neurodivergent, who uh, perhaps suffers from something like ADHD or autism or the anywhere on the autism spectrum or anything like that, or just like atypical neurodivergence, which is something that people are starting to be diagnosed with more and more, like some combination of the two or something resembling either one. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize that like it's small hangups like that that make sticking with something hard it's not that the amount of books that i stop reading on my tbr i'm going to say 70 percent of them are first person and the reason why i stop reading them is because the author assumes as i'm guessing is a neurotypical person that how they are writing the internal monologue of reacting to things is how other people react to them and my problem is the fact that that's not how my brain works so where it's supposed to be a self-insert a first person is always supposed to be a self-insert you're supposed to put yourself in the shoes of the character 
I don't think like how the protagonists think. My thought process isn't the same. My rationalization of emotion isn't the same because of those uh, neurodivergent tendencies that I have. And because of that, it makes it very hard to read those stories because I cannot put myself in those shoes and the format of the narrative is making me do that. Uh, it's nothing against the books. It's my own thing. Um, if you're somebody out there who watches my video this far into it and you also suffer from things like that, like, I, I don't know if I'm alone. Like, there's so, like, in how I view this, because there's neurodivergence is it's a plethora of things and it's a plethora of different coping mechanisms and everything else. So I don't know if I'm actually alone in how I view this. Maybe other people have an easier time with this type of narrative because of that. Uh, I don't, I need my books to basically be third person so that I can play out what's happening in the book in my head, like a picture that's how my brain processes I, I i can't get into the feeling of the person and self-inserting myself into the narrative uh, because my brain also doesn't process like when i read i don't hear the words in my head i see the pictures and if i'm unable to see the pictures because i can't gel with the fact that this person feels things differently than I do or experiences the world differently than I do and it's put into the narrative that that's how you're supposed to do it it takes me out of it uh however like always I will try I try all the time occasionally I get lucky and the way a book is written allows me to self-insert into it those are few and far between, but I always give them a valiant effort. In any case, here's my rant about being a neurodivergent individual who loves reading. There's no pamphlet or anything, so I'm just gonna make sure I didn't uh, leave anything out. Oh, they include prices this time. So let's see. The cozy tea set was $19.99. The library blanket was $25.99. The candle was $14.99. The Autumn shower gel was $12.99. The autumn perfume roller, $9.50. And then the book itself was $27.99. So I'll insert a little thing up here with the price all together uh, compared to how much I paid for it once I find that. And you can see uh, basic comparison of costs. I'm gonna go off of just what's on here. The value of the box is more than I paid for it just with quick maths in my head. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, this was the Unplugged Box Limited Edition Cozy Autumn Box. What did you guys think? Was there an item you liked? Was there anything else you'd like to talk about in the comments? Maybe you already read that and you can tell me how it is. Uh, I always take actual people's reviews of things much more seriously than anything I read online from even other content creators like me. It, it's, a, it's a little hard to take somebody seriously. Like I pay for this stuff. Like a lot, a lot of people don't anymore and you have to take a grain of salt with that. But yeah, what did you guys think? Do you want me to do the next one that's coming out? I don't know what it is yet. Uh, they haven't released it. A Twisted Retreat is coming out at some point soon. Uh, my Fiction Bath Co. Pamper Box is also coming out if you guys want to hang around for that. It hasn't come in the mail yet. I think it's supposed to be here like next week or the week after or something like that. Uh, so yeah, that's coming up. Uh, I've got some reviews for some movies and things that I've seen. If you like this video, hit like. Uh, if you want to subscribe and see more like this, I am branching out into new unboxings and things like that if that's why you're here. If not, go check out my other content. You might like something else that I've done. Uh, I've got some other stuff coming on along. I've just got to have time to work on it. But yeah, uh, that's gonna be it for today. Uh, thank you guys so much for stopping by and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.